9.33-35 Just because God has set aside the kingdom program does not mean that physical miracles stop happening. In fact, we will see God doing physical miracles through the end of the book of Acts, because the Jews require a sign, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22, and God wants to provoke them to jealousy, Romans 11 verse 11. In Luke 5 verses 24 to 25, Jesus told a man sick of the palsy to take up his couch and walk. This is significant because Luke 5 verse 17 says that, at that time, the power of the Lord was present to heal religious Israel. That is because the kingdom of heaven was at hand, Matthew 4 verse 17. Now, in 9 colon 33 dash 35, we see another man sick of the palsy, and Peter tells him to take up his bed and walk. This is significant because this is the first mention of Peter, the leader of the believing remnant of Israel, Matthew 16 verses 18 to 19, since God put the kingdom on hold and began the dispensation of grace. We are also told that the man had been sick for eight years, and eight is the number of a new beginning in the Bible. Therefore, the healing of the man sick of the palsy is not just some random healing. Rather, it signifies that the power of the Lord is still present to heal religious Israel, but that power is now in the new beginning that Israel has by having the mystery gospel go to them under the new dispensation of grace. Jews can still be forgiven of their sins and have eternal life with God, even though the kingdom program has been put on hold. What is amazing is that all those who saw the man turn to the Lord, 935. What this shows is that the Jewish religious leaders had been holding back Israel from being saved by holding them to their own traditions and by rejecting the Messiah. Now that the kingdom program has been put on hold, there are no religious leaders over the Jews, and they are free to believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sins. 9.36-41 This is another miracle that shows that God is willing to save Jews in the dispensation of grace. Tabitha did good works, just like John the Baptist, Jesus, and his disciples did good works during his earthly ministry. Tabitha was sick and died, just like Israel killed their Messiah, spiritual sickness, and stoned Stephen, spiritual death. It may seem weird that they would wash a dead body and put her in an upper chamber, but this is also a type of what God did with Israel. He gave Israel a renewed opportunity to be saved by washing her with water, 238, and giving her the Holy Ghost in an upper room, 113 and 2, colon 4. Tabitha was raised from the dead, just like Israel now has the opportunity to be raised from the dead, spiritually speaking, by believing the mystery gospel that has now been made manifest, Romans 16 verses 25 to 26. Lydda was nigh to Joppa. 938, just like the mystery dispensation was now nigh to the prophecy dispensation. 937, the Jews took great care of dead bodies. This verse shows that they would bathe them. Luke 24 verse 1 shows that they would bring spices to the grave to mask the smell of the decaying process. 942, just like in 935, we see many Jews saved in the mystery dispensation, as a result of the miracle that shows that Israel has a renewed opportunity to have eternal life with God. Nine forty-three. We are told three times that Peter was lodging with a tanner. Nine forty-three, ten colon six, and ten thirty-two. A tanner was one who took dead animal skins and made them into leather. Leviticus 11 verse 8 prohibited a Jew from touching the carcass of a ceremonially unclean animal. Therefore, a good Jew, like Peter, would not associate with a tanner. However, there has been a dispensational change. God would soon show him a sheet of unclean meat and tell him, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. 10.15 Therefore, Peter's lodging many days, 943, with a tanner is yet another clue that the prophecy dispensation has been set aside and the mystery dispensation has begun. 10 The Gospel of Grace goes to the Gentiles for the first time recorded, and God calls Peter to give the message so that he may see the dispensational change firsthand. 10 colon 1-2 Cornelius is a devout man 
and one that feared God with all his house, but he is a Gentile. Because the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile was up through Acts 7, he did not receive the Holy Ghost like. Devout Jews, 2 5, did in 241. Rather, he was to be blessed by God for blessing Israel, Genesis 12 verse 3, which is why we are told that he gave alms, 10 colon 2. Now, however, with the change in program, God will make Cornelius a member of the body of Christ. 10 colon 3-5 Now, that the middle wall of partition has come down, Ephesians 2 verse 14, God is going to save Gentiles with the gospel of grace and give them the Holy Ghost. Although Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 13, Peter is still learning about the change in programs. Therefore, God calls Peter to reach Cornelius as a learning experience for Peter. Peter is also probably called to reach Cornelius because of the great respect and godlike status that Peter has with Cornelius, 1025. Therefore, Cornelius also needs to learn that God has taken down the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile. 10 6 Peter will instruct Cornelius, but first Peter must learn that God is no longer a respecter of persons, which he will learn in 10 9 16. Most Christians think that God was never a respecter of persons, and it was Peter's Jewish pride that kept him from realizing this until now, 1034. However, God specifically says, in Deuteronomy 7 verse 6, that he had made Israel a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Jesus himself recognized this when he refused to even talk to a Gentile woman, finally saying, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matthew 15 verse 24. In Matthew 10 verse 5, Jesus told Peter, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, Matthew 10 verse 5, and that he would continue to go only to Israel until Jesus' second coming, Matthew 10 verse 23. Now, the Spirit tells Peter to go to the Gentiles, 10 colon 19-20. Clearly, there has been a dispensational change. 10 colon 9-10 The fact that Peter became very hungry and would have eaten may imply that God made him hungry. Even if he did not, God waited at least until Peter was hungry to teach him that God is now going to the Gentiles apart from Israel, even though the Gentiles were unclean in Israel's program. 10 colon 12 15 in Leviticus 11 verses 4 to 8, God declares certain animals unclean to eat. Therefore, Peter has never eaten anything that is common or unclean, 1014. Now, though, God tells Peter that God hath cleansed all of the unclean animals. This is not in line with God's law in Israel's program, but it is in line with the dispensation of grace in which God says, for every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, 1 Timothy 4 verse 4. Therefore, a dispensational change has occurred from prophecy to mystery, Romans 16 verses 25 to 26, which means the animals that were unclean to Peter all of his life have now been cleansed by God in this dispensation of grace. Note that 1015 specifically says that God hath cleansed these animals, which means that the animals were unclean before then. Christians, who refuse to recognize the mystery dispensation, will say that this vision is not about unclean animals being made clean due to a dispensational change, but that the Gentiles are now clean in the eyes of God. Therefore, no dispensational change has occurred. According to 1028, the Gentiles being clean in God's eyes is the correct interpretation of the vision. However, we need to note two things. First, initially, Peter does not know what the vision means, 1017. Therefore, his response of not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean, 1014, is in reference to actual unclean animals. If God had started a new dispensation at the cross, in which there are no unclean animals, Peter would have been eating those unclean animals since then. Since we are now in Acts 10 and he has not eaten any unclean animals up to this point, it shows that no dispensational change occurred at the cross or in Acts 2. Second, Peter is still under the law, 
because he says that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. 10:28. Therefore, even here in Acts 10, because he is a saved member of Israel's program, Peter is still under the law. It is just that he has now learned that, because of the dispensational change, he can keep company with Gentiles now, 1028. But, he is still to be zealous of the law, 2120. In other words, if a dispensational change had occurred at the cross or at Acts 2, in the 40 days that Jesus was with his disciples before his ascension, he would have taught Peter the lesson that he is not under the law, but under grace, Romans 6 verse 14, because God has blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against him, which was contrary to him, and took it out of the way, nailing it to Christ's cross, Colossians 2 verse 14. Instead, that was a message that God revealed to Paul first in Acts 9. Meanwhile, Peter will always be under the law, because he was saved as part of Israel's program. Therefore, the trance of 10, 9-16 is not God getting it through Peter's thick skull that he has been doing things incorrectly in Acts so far. Rather, it is God telling Peter that, due to the dispensational change in Acts 9, the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile is down, such that he need not isolate himself from Gentiles anymore. They can now be saved by the dispensation of grace, by which Paul was the first one saved in Acts 9, 1 Timothy 1 verse 16. 10 colon 16 17 The vision of unclean meat is a major departure from God's instructions to Peter before Acts 9. Therefore, God brings the vision to him three times, and he is still unsure of the vision's meaning. Again, if God had not been continuing Israel's program after the cross, Peter would have been eating previously unclean meat and going to the Gentiles before the Holy Ghost came in Acts 2. Instead, the Holy Ghost was given to them in Acts 2 to give them the power to continue Israel's program, not to start something new. Therefore, Peter is now confused by God's command to eat unclean meat, because it is directly against the law of Moses and all instructions he had received from God before Acts 9. 10 colon 19 20 Peter is still thinking on the vision when the three men come from Cornelius' house, because this is new information to him, due to the dispensational change that occurred in Acts 9. The Spirit has to tell Peter not to doubt. What is going on? Peter needs to understand that, because the dispensation of grace has begun, God is saving the Gentiles, apart from the Jews and he is saving them with the new gospel of grace, not the gospel of the kingdom. More important than learning that all animals are now clean, Peter needs to learn that all people are now clean. In other words, the vision of the formerly unclean meat that is now clean was to teach Peter that the formerly unclean Gentiles are now clean in the sense that they can be saved by the gospel. While Peter was only supposed to go to the Jews before, Matthew 10 verse 6, now, the gospel is to go to all nations. While the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 4 verse 17, was preached before, which is to repent and be water baptized for the remission of sins, 238, the gospel of the grace of God, 2024, is being preached now, which is to trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for sins, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. 1021, note that Peter does not know what is going on. He just saw a vision of unclean meat that he is supposed to eat, even though God had previously said it was unclean. Now, the Spirit tells him to go with three men, but he does not know why they have sent for him. God keeps the details a secret, because the dispensational change is causing Peter to make some major changes, which his flesh does not want to make. 1022 This verse tells us that Cornelius was a Gentile, who came to God through the Abrahamic covenant as a Gentile was supposed to. That is, he blessed Israel in order to be blessed by God. Genesis 12 verse 3. The problem is that the nation of Israel is an unbelief. In 8 27 28, an Ethiopian man came to Jerusalem to worship and never found out the meaning of Isaiah 53 verses 7 to 8 even though Jesus Christ fulfilled it just one year earlier. Given this, we can assume that Cornelius was also seeking answers from God as to what Jesus did. Was he the Messiah? He probably went to Jerusalem for the answer, and he got nowhere.
Therefore, he fasted and prayed, 1030, and God has now answered his prayer by sending him Peter. 1024, Peter's audience will be Cornelius' family and friends. 10, 25, 26, Cornelius feared God and prayed to God always. 10, 2. He is not a man who worships idols or men. He did not worship the angel in bright clothing who came to him, 1030, but yet he worshiped Peter. This probably means that Cornelius thinks that Peter is God in human flesh. Peter had been elevated by people to being God himself. This is probably because everyone was healed when he passed by, 5, 15 16, and he had the authority to remit or retain sins, Matthew 16, verses 18 to 19. The Jews may have been saying that Peter was the resurrected Jesus, or Cornelius may have seen Jesus as the one preparing the way for the Messiah, which would make Peter the Messiah, because of the miracles he did. This would explain why Cornelius worshipped Peter. 1028 Peter got the point of the vision that God had sent him. He realized that he should not call any man common or unclean, although the vision also told him that, since he would be with Gentiles, he did not have to worry about refraining from eating unclean food with them. Note that Peter says that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. This may be a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ's command not to go to anyone with the gospel but the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matthew 10 verses 5 to 6. Peter has learned the lesson from the vision that God has declared the Gentiles clean. They can now receive and believe the gospel for eternal life. This coincides with a change from the kingdom gospel of repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, 238, to the mystery gospel of trusting in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for the atonement of sins, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 to 4. Although, based on what Peter says in 10, 34-43, it appears that he does not understand the mystery gospel yet. What he does understand now, though, is that God has taken down the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile in the dispensation of grace, Ephesians 2 verse 14. 10:29 in 10, 6, God told Cornelius that Peter would tell him what he ought to do. In 10:22, Peter asked Cornelius' servants why they came to him. Now, Peter is asking why Cornelius sent for him. The answer is that Peter is to speak. What God has told him to speak, 1033. Therefore, God will make sure Peter speaks the correct message to Cornelius, even though only God knows what is going on at this point. 103010, 7 says that an angel spoke unto Cornelius. Here, he describes the angel as a man, in bright clothing. Most everyone thinks that an angel has wings, but the Bible says that angels look like men. Therefore, they have no wings. Cherubim are spirit creatures with wings, Exodus 25 verse 20, and Satan is a cherub, Ezekiel 28 verse 14. This tells us that Satan has gotten man to make angels look like himself. In doing so, he has transformed himself into an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14. He has also gotten men to worship angels, Colossians 2 verse 18. Therefore, Satan has gotten men to worship him, and it all started with getting men to add wings to angels. 1032 Jesus had given Simon the surname of Peter, Mark 3 verse 16. He did so in the context of Peter being the leader of the little flock with the power to forgive or retain sins, Matthew 16 verses 18 to 19. Throughout the Gospels, he is called Peter, 93 times, more than he is called Simon, 41 times. Yet, three times in this passage, 10, 5, 1018, and 1032, he is called Simon, whose surname is Peter, even though this may be confusing, since he was residing with another man named Simon. The fact that the name Simon is given is probably a clue to the reader that Peter no longer has the power to forgive or retain sins, since the prophecy program has now been set aside. 10, 34 Cornelius says that they are waiting to hear what God tells Peter to say, and then Peter opens his mouth and speaks for 10 verses before the Holy Ghost comes upon the Gentiles in his presence. 
Although Peter does not know what is going on, we can conclude, from 10, 6, that he is speaking the words that Cornelius needs to hear. The first thing he says is that God is no respecter of persons, which shows that the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile has come down. There is no difference between Jew and Greek in the dispensation of grace, Romans 10 verses 12 to 13. 1035 This statement represents a major departure from the kingdom program. Even the little flock, who was scattered due to the persecution in 8, 1, preached to Jews only, 1119. Now, Peter has learned that God also accepts Gentiles who fear God and work righteousness. The way he knows this is that God sent Peter to preach to one of these Gentiles. 10,36-37 Based upon the information in 10,34-43, the only thing Peter has learned in the dispensation of grace is that God is no respecter of persons. He does not yet know the mystery gospel. Therefore, he starts with the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, 1036. It was not a gospel for all the world at the time. The gospel of the kingdom was only to the children of Israel. In 1037, Peter says that they know this gospel, yet, they were not saved by it, because it was not for them. The Gentiles, in Israel's program, were not saved by repenting and being water baptized, 238. They were saved by blessing Israel, Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. Therefore, Peter does not go into the details of this gospel, because it is not applicable to them. Peter knows that Paul is preaching the mystery gospel, since Paul stayed with him for 15 days, three years after receiving the revelation of the mystery, Galatians 1 verse 18. But, the mystery is new information that is hard for Peter to understand, since he was brought up in the Jewish religion and taught the kingdom program by Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3 verses 15 to 16. Therefore, in speaking here, Peter sticks to information about what Jesus Christ did that is not applicable only to Israel's program. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. Rather than resting things he does not understand, which will cause Cornelius destruction, 2 Peter 3 verse 16, he will speak what he does know. Since he will be speaking God's word, he trusts that, if his audience believes what he says, the Holy Spirit will give them eternal life. After all, if what he does know does not contain the mystery gospel in there somewhere, then God would not have sent him to speak to Cornelius. He says that peace comes by Jesus Christ. Because all the kingdoms of the world belonged to Satan, Luke 4 verses 5 to 8, Jesus had to bind Satan, Matthew 12 verse 29, by giving his life a ransom for the many of Israel, Matthew 20 verse 28 and Isaiah 53 verse 11. With the beginning of the mystery program in Acts 9, Jesus Christ revealed to Paul that he really gave his life a ransom for all, not just the many of Israel, 1 Timothy 2 verse 6. Peter also knows this now. Note also the parenthetical reference that he is Lord of all, which shows that, as Lord of all, he has the ability to save Gentiles, and not just Jews. 1038 Since Cornelius' household knows the gospel of the kingdom and it does not apply to them, Peter skips it and talks about what Jesus Christ did, since he gave his life a ransom for all. 1038 focuses on what Jesus, the man, did in his earthly ministry. He preached the gospel and performed miracles, because God was with him. 10,39-40 Peter says that he saw the things that Jesus did both in the land of the Jews, and in Jerusalem. In wording it that way, he is saying that Jerusalem is not the land of the Jews. However, in the Jewish mind, Jerusalem was the center of the Jewish religion, while Galilee, where Jesus had most of his ministry, was considered by them to be Galilee of the Gentiles, Matthew 4 verse 15, because the Galileans were not followers of the Jewish religion. What this shows is that God looks at things spiritually, while man looks at things physically. Since Peter is speaking God's word, he sees the land of the Jews as the place where the Israel of God, Galatians 6 verse 16, was, rather than where the Jewish religion was at its strongest. Because the Jewish religion in Jerusalem was not the Israel of God, they slew Jesus and hung him on a tree. 
By saying that he was hung on a tree, rather than he was crucified, Peter is letting his audience know that Jesus became a curse for them because Deuteronomy 21 verse 23 says that he that is hanged is accursed of God. However, because Jesus had never sinned, Hebrews 4 verse 15, God raised him from the dead on the third day. Note how, in these two verses, Peter has just said that Jesus died and was raised from the dead by God on the third day. The Mystery Gospel is to trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for sins, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 to 4. Therefore, Peter just shared part of the mystery gospel without even realizing it. 1041 Note that the resurrected Jesus was only shown to witnesses who God chose. Spiritually speaking, God will only reveal his word to those who are in the resurrected Jesus, Colossians 3 verse 3, because the natural man cannot understand the things of God, 1 Corinthians 2 verses 9 to 14. 1042 Jesus will not show himself to unbelievers until his second coming when he judges him. That is why Jesus, before his crucifixion, said, Ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Matthew 23 verse 39. Yet, believers do see him, once they are saved, because they are placed into his death, burial, and resurrection, Romans 6 verses 3 to 6. Because of his victory over death, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 54 to 57, he is now the judge of quick and dead, which means that he alone can judge all of humanity, both the alive, the quick, who are alive because they have eternal life through Jesus' death, and the dead, who are dead because they have not believed the gospel so as to pass from death unto life, John 5 verse 24. 1043, Peter says, Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. He is not preaching the mystery gospel, because John 3 verse 16 also says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, and, at that time, salvation was of the Jews, John 4 verse 22. Believing in him, then, means believing the message that he preached. To Israel in their program, this message was to repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, 238. To those in the mystery program, it means to trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sins, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 to 4, which is the message that Jesus preached to Paul, Galatians 1 verses 11 to 12. Therefore, believing in him is a generic term that applies to either dispensation. This is important to understand because, in speaking this, Peter's audience has now heard the full, mystery gospel. They heard that Jesus died and rose from the dead, 10, 39-40, and that believing in him gives them remission of sins. Since they have now heard and believed the full, mystery gospel, they now have eternal life and so the Holy Ghost falls on them, 1044. Now, when Peter says that all the prophets witness that salvation is by believing in him, he is probably not referring to the Old Testament prophets, since the gospel of grace was kept hidden until revealed to Paul by Jesus Christ in Acts 9, Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 5. In referring to the mystery, Paul says that, in other ages, it was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, Ephesians 3 verse 5. Thus, all the prophets living during Peter's time confirm that the gospel of grace is the new gospel from God. In fact, we are told that Jesus Christ specifically gave prophets to the mystery program, Ephesians 4 verses 8 and 11, until the written word of God was completed, Ephesians 4 verse 13. In other words, all of the prophets of the Lord, who Cornelius could go to, would confirm that salvation for the Gentiles comes by trusting in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for sins, rather than needing to bless Israel, which was the method of salvation for Gentiles in Israel's program, see 10, 2, 22, and Genesis 12 verse 3. 1044, the change in Gospels is seen in that the Holy Ghost fell upon those who believed. In 238, Peter said that they must repent and be baptized before they will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here, however, they receive the Holy Ghost before they are baptized, 1047. The gospel of grace is now in effect, which does not require water baptism. 
Therefore, they hear the gospel, they believe, and they immediately receive the Holy Ghost. This shows when salvation occurs in this current dispensation. It happens immediately upon belief. 1045 Not only was Peter sent to the Gentiles so that they might believe and receive the Holy Ghost, but he was also sent to show to saved Israel the change in dispensations. See how the saved Jews were astonished that the Gentiles received the Holy Ghost. If believers had been under the New Covenant since the cross or since Acts 2, there would have been no astonishment here. Christians argue, no, these Jewish believers were just biased against the Gentiles. They had racial pride and thought that God would only save them. That is why they were astonished. That argument is not true because 6 colon 1 says that there were Gentiles among the little flock, and 6 colon 3, 5 says that there was a proselyte, named Nicholas, who was full of the Holy Ghost. What this shows is that believing Gentiles had become members of the little flock before the stoning of Stephen, but they had done so by becoming Jews. In other words, Nicholas was water baptized and physically circumcised in order to get on the right side of the middle wall of partition. What astonishes the believing Jews with Peter is that Gentiles received the gift of the Holy Ghost without doing those things. All they did was believe. Therefore, a dispensational change has occurred because, up until this point, no Gentile had ever received the gift of the Holy Ghost without first being water, baptized, and physically circumcised, if male. 1046 In spite of the dispensational change, these Gentiles speak with tongues, just like those receiving the Holy Ghost in Acts 2-7. There are at least three reasons for this. First, all of the Jews present needed to know that the these Gentiles were now saved. Otherwise, Peter would have kept preaching and would not have learned when they became saved. Thus, the speaking in tongues taught the little flock that God had made a dispensational change. Second, the gift of speaking in tongues is given to the body of Christ during the diminishing away of Israel during the dispensation of grace, Acts 9 to 28, to provoke unsaved Israel to jealousy, Romans 11 verse 11. In other words, unsaved Israel would now see that God is not going to wait around for them to believe, but he will now save Gentiles in spite of Israel's unbelief. Some of unsaved Israel may then get jealous and believe the gospel of the grace of God. Third, the gift of speaking in tongues is given for the body of Christ to learn sound doctrine for the new dispensation. Since the mystery was kept secret since the world began, Romans 16 verse 25, these new believers have no Bible they can read to learn mystery doctrine. Therefore, God gave the gift of speaking in tongues as a way of teaching mystery. Doctrine to the Early Church Once the mystery doctrine was written down in God's Word, speaking in tongues was done away with, 1 Corinthians 13 verses 8 to 10. Therefore, speaking in tongues was given at this time to teach saved Jews, unsaved Jews, and saved Gentiles. After this, saved Jews no longer need to hear the speaking in tongues by these Gentiles, since saved Jews already have this gift themselves. Unsaved Jews need to hear speaking in tongues as long as the gospel of grace is going to them, which is through the end of Acts. Saved Gentiles need to hear the speaking in tongues until mystery doctrine is written down for them, which is also probably at the end of Acts. Therefore, speaking in tongues is not for today, but it was very beneficial during the Acts period. 10.47-48 Water baptism is specific to Israel's program and was required for salvation as part of the Gospel of the Kingdom, 238. It is not for today as an outward manifestation of an inward work of grace. In fact, it is never that in any dispensation at any time. If you want an outward manifestation, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you God's Word and work through you as you live it out. Being sprinkled with or dunked in water only proves that you are not afraid of water. It does not prove that you have eternal life. Nevertheless, Peter Water baptizes these Gentiles so they will not offend the saved Jews who are present, 1045, since those Jews were water baptized for salvation. It will also help the saved Gentiles reach unsaved Jews should the opportunity arise. That is why Paul circumcised Timothy, 16, 3 
and we do not see any new Christian converts today lining up to get circumcised as an outward manifestation of an inward work of grace, which is more of an outward manifestation than water baptism is. Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. 1 Corinthians 9.20 AM 11. The Jerusalem saints hear of God's saving of Gentiles without becoming Jewish proselytes. The first Christian church is established in Antioch. Mystery doctrine is taught for one year there. They are strengthened with might in. The inner man, Ephesians 3 verse 16, such that they decide on their own to help the poor, Jerusalem saints, who had sold all that they had. Therefore, the body of Christ is starting to grow, and Gentiles are a big part of it, since the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile has come down, Ephesians 2 verse 14. 11 colon 2-3 Here comes the opposition. Before, opposition to what God was doing came from the Jewish religious leaders. Now, it comes from within the little flock of saved Jews, who see Peter's eating with Gentiles as breaking the law. Again, if the current dispensation had started at the cross or at Acts 2, there would have been no opposition here. Paul records, in Galatians 2 verse 12, that Peter will later buckle under pressure from Jews by separating himself from Gentiles. However, at this time, he shares Gentile salvation apart from becoming proselytes, and these saved Jews glorify God, 1118. Thus, now all the saved Jews in Jerusalem, both those who came with Peter and those who stayed home, know that God has made a change in dispensations. 11, 4-17 God only has to say something once for it to be true. However, when he repeats himself, you know that what he is saying is of particular importance. The story of Paul's conversion, ushering in the dispensation of grace, is so important that God tells it to us in Acts 9, 22, and 26. Similarly, the first recording of Gentiles being saved by the gospel of grace is important enough for God to mention it both here and in Acts 10. 11, 5, 10 The sheet of meat was let down from heaven and was, at the end, drawn up again into heaven. The meat represents the Gentiles being declared clean by God under the new, mystery dispensation. If they were not clean, they could not have been let down from heaven or drawn up into heaven. This is a clue to the fact that the body of Christ has now been raised up to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 verse 6. 11 colon 6 7 with the previously unclean meat coming down from heaven. God is primarily telling Peter that the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile has come down, such that all men, both Jew and Gentile, may now be saved by trusting in Jesus' death as atonement for sins. Gentiles can now be reached directly with a gospel from God. Rather than having to wait for Israel, as a kingdom of priests, Exodus 19 verses 5-6, to preach the gospel to them in the millennial reign. 11, 8, not so, Lord is a contradictory statement, because, if God is Peter's Lord, then he would not argue with him. However, it is easy to understand why Peter argued, because God has changed the rules on him. In the kingdom dispensation, there are many unclean animals, Leviticus 11 verses 4 to 8, and the Gentiles are unclean to preach the gospel to, Matthew 10 verses 5 to 6. Now, in the mystery dispensation, all animals are clean to eat, 1 Timothy 4 verse 4, and all people may be reached with the gospel, Ephesians 2 verses 14 to 18. So, when Peter says, not so, Lord, he does so based on the Mosaic law, and not because he is an unbeliever. 11 colon 9 God hath cleansed unclean animals and unclean people, the Gentiles, meaning that they were not clean in the prophecy program, because God gave them up, due to their unbelief, Romans 1 verse 28. However, God knew that some Gentiles would believe, and so God winked at them, 1730, under Israel's program, knowing that he would turn his attention back to the Gentiles with the mystery program. Therefore, the Gentiles are now clean if they believe the gospel of the grace of God. 1110 Peter had to see the vision three times before he would be willing to go with the Gentiles who were sent to him. The sheet of meat being drawn up again into heaven also refers to how the saved members of the body of Christ will be raptured up to heaven. 
We have already been raised up to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 verse 6. Thus, the rapture is us being drawn up again into heaven. 11 12 and 10 23, we were told that certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Now, we are told that there were six brethren who went with Peter. 1114 detail is added here, telling us that God told Cornelius that Peter would tell him how to be saved. They were already following Genesis 12 verse 3 by blessing Israel in order to be blessed. However, Israel was an apostasy, and the mystery dispensation had now begun. Therefore, God had Peter tell them the mystery gospel so that they could be part of the body of Christ. Nevertheless, Peter did not understand much about it, which is why this verse says that he told them words, rather than saying that he gave them the gospel. 11.15 This verse shows that no works are required for salvation under the current dispensation of grace. In the gospel of the kingdom, they had to be water baptized before they were saved. 2.38 Now, though, they are saved immediately upon belief in the gospel. 11.16-17 Peter quotes 1.5 and Christians immediately object to the mystery by saying that the Gentiles, in Acts 10, were saved in the same way as the 3000 in 241 were saved. However, that is not what Peter is saying. Peter is not giving the gospel here. Rather, he is defending his actions before a contentious, but saved, Jewish audience, 11, 2-3. These people knew that Jesus said that the Holy Ghost would only come upon believers. Peter is saying that, since the Holy Ghost came upon the Gentiles, what happened in Acts 10 was of God, just like what happened in Acts 2 was of God. This means that, if Peter had not eaten with Gentiles, he would have been withstanding God. Therefore, rather than contending with Peter over breaking the law, they should be glorifying God that Gentiles were saved, and that is what they do in 11.18. The quote of 1 colon 5, then, does not negate the dispensational change that had occurred. Rather, it shows that the mystery dispensation is of God, just like the prophecy dispensation is of God. 1118, to repent, means to change your mind. This definition comes from Numbers 2319. It does not mean to turn from your sins. This definition comes from Christianity. If you could turn from your sins, then God would not save you, because God's love was commended to us while we were yet sinners, Romans 5 verse 8. God's love is not commended to self-righteous people who have somehow made themselves good enough for God to save them. Rather, it is sinners who God has called to repentance or to change their minds, Matthew 9 verse 13. Therefore, the statement here about the Gentiles repenting unto life just means that they stopped trusting in their own self-righteousness and trusted in God's imputed righteousness to give them life through believing the gospel. In the kingdom dispensation, repentance meant to change your mind about following Jewish traditions and start believing in God's law covenant to save you. Today, in the grace dispensation, repentance means to change your mind about your own works and religion getting you into heaven and trust in Jesus' death and resurrection to give you eternal life. Either way, repentance is required for salvation and is not to be confused, here, with the gospel of repent and be baptized, for the remission of sins found in 238. 11, 19-2011-19 takes us back to 8, 1 when the little flock was scattered due to the persecution that occurred at the time of Stephen's stoning. Because the mystery had not been revealed yet, these believers preached unto the Jews only, as Jesus had commanded them to do, Matthew 10 verses 5 to 6. After the mystery was revealed to Paul in 922, Paul went to the churches of Judea with the new gospel of grace, Galatians 1 verse 22 and 931, and we see all the prophets of God, in 1043, witnessing that the gospel of grace is the gospel for today. Word, then, must have spread to the believers in Cyprus and Cyrene because, even though they only spoke the gospel of the kingdom to the Jews before, they are now preaching the Lord Jesus to the Gentiles, 1120. This shows that the mystery gospel is now being preached. 1121, the hand of the Lord was with them shows that God is the one who changed dispensations. 
If the mystery was something that man had concocted, God would not be with them preaching to the Gentiles, since he told them to preach to Israel only, Matthew 10 verses 5 to 6. The fact that a great number believed in Antioch shows that the nations are now receiving eternal life, continuing what we saw in Acts 10 with Cornelius and those with him. 1122, it has now been over three years since the mystery was given to Saul, Galatians 1 verse 18. God said that Saul would preach the gospel to all people, 915, but the Jerusalem church does not like Saul, because he had persecuted them before the dispensational change. Barnabas was the first one in Jerusalem, who was excited about Saul and the new dispensation that God had started with him, 9,26-27. Since Barnabas was one of them, the Jerusalem saints sent for Barnabas to reach these new believers. Because Saul is the apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 15, Barnabas will soon recognize that he is in over his head and will go to Tarsus to get Saul so that he can come and give sound mystery doctrine to these new believers, 1125. 1123, when Samaritans were saved in Acts 8, the Jerusalem apostles sent Peter and John to them to pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost, 8, 15-17. In Antioch, though, there is no mention of an extra step that is necessary in order for them to receive the Holy Ghost. This shows the change in dispensation. The Holy Ghost came upon the Antiochians immediately upon believing the gospel, as he did in 1044, while, in the kingdom dispensation, the twelve apostles had the power to retain or remit sins, and so the Holy Ghost only came upon believers through them, John 20 verses 22 to 23. Therefore, when Barnabas arrives in Antioch, he sees the grace of God. In other words, Barnabas sees that they already have the Holy Ghost, 1124, much people being added to the Lord means that more people were believing the gospel as Barnabas was there. It is not a reference to the people who had already believed before Barnabas got there, because those people had already been added to the Lord, 1021. In other words, Barnabas did not add them to the Lord, their belief in the gospel added them to the Lord. 1125, apparently, Barnabas is over his head. He knows about Israel's program, having had all things in common with the little flock of Israel, for, colon 35-37. But, he does not know much about the mystery program. Jesus Christ had made Saul the apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 15, and had spent three years educating him with the doctrine. For this new dispensation, Galatians 1 verse 18. Jesus Christ had specifically committed the dispensation of the mystery gospel to Saul, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 17. Therefore, about all Barnabas can do is exhort the new believers to cleave to the Lord, 1123, but he does not know how to answer their questions and edify them in the doctrine. Therefore, he goes to Tarsus to get Saul to bring him to Antioch, 1126. Now, you may wonder why Saul was not already in Antioch. There are probably two reasons, one, he does not get along well with the Jewish believers yet, and so they probably do not want him there, which is why they called for Barnabas instead, and two, Saul has undergone a major transformation from being zealous of the Jewish religion, 22, 3, and Galatians 1 verse 14, to learning something completely new from Jesus Christ. Today, we have God's completed word, and Christianity thinks we are bonkers for believing the mystery. How much more, then, must all religious Jewish people, both believers and unbelievers, think that he is a wacko? Therefore, Saul is probably apprehensive about sharing the mystery information that Jesus Christ has revealed to him. 1126, this is the first record of the edification of the body of Christ in the Bible. Saul had learned much from his three years with Jesus Christ, such that he is able to spend a whole year instructing these believers in mystery doctrine. The disciples. Here, are not the twelve disciples. Rather, it is a reference to Saul's disciples those who are being discipled in the gospel of grace and the mystery that Saul had learned by direct revelation from Jesus Christ over a three-year period, Galatians 1, 12, 17-18. The term Christian is first used here, 
It is significant, then, that the term Christian was first used in reference to following what Christ revealed regarding the mystery program. The term Christian is used today, and most everyone thinks it means following what Christ said to do in Matthew through John. However, because Christ's instructions to us today are found only in Paul's epistles, a Christian today should follow the instructions in Paul's epistles, not Christ's instructions in Matthew through John. The reason that the term Christian is first used here is because believers of the current dispensation are part of the body of Christ. So, they are to be Christ-like or Christians, being part of his body. When Christ came to earth, he did not start something new. Rather, he just continued what God started in Genesis 12 with Abram. He did not speak of his own accord, but he spoke whatever his father commanded him to speak. John 8 verses 28 and 38 and 15 15. Therefore, the believers in Matthew John were following God the Father, as directed to do so by Christ. By contrast, Jesus Christ began the mystery program after his ascension. By then, God had made him Lord, 236. As Lord, he called Saul on the road to Damascus, 9, 5. Therefore, mystery believers follow Jesus Christ, as directed to do so by Paul, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, making them Christians, a title that is not appropriate for believers in Matthew, John. Having said that, Christian is still an appropriate title for believers in Israel's program after the cross, because they would also be following Christ after he became Lord. Therefore, Peter calls prophecy believers Christians in 1 Peter 4 verse 16. 11, 27-28 When the word prophets is seen in scripture, people usually think of the Old Testament. However, God had prophets until the time that the word of God was completed. Ephesians 4 verses 8 and 11 says that Christ gave prophets to the body of Christ, and Ephesians 4 verse 13 says that they were given until the word of God was completed. The prophets, here, show that, when Peter said in 1043 that all the prophets give witness to Jesus Christ, he was talking about the prophets in Jerusalem at the time that God gave to Israel in their dispensation until the word of God was completed. Agabus is also mentioned in 27, 10-11, where he says, by the Holy Ghost, what will happen to Paul if he goes to Jerusalem? Therefore, he is a true prophet of God. When Jesus stood up in 755 and set aside the kingdom program, he gave Israel another chance to be saved through the gospel of grace given to Paul. However, God still sends punishment to Israel for their rejection of the kingdom program through this worldwide famine that will result in the Jews being commanded by Claudius Caesar to leave Rome, 18, 2. There will also be persecution within the church. By Herod, 12, 1. In other words, because of Israel's unbelief, their program has been set aside. God will still give them the gospel of grace through the Apostle Paul, but they will be punished with persecution and famine and having to leave Rome, because of their unbelief. This is how the Lord chastens them, so that they may believe and have eternal life with him, Hebrews 12 verses 5 to 7. 11, 29-30 Jesus commanded the little flock to sell all that they have, Luke 12 verse 33 and Matthew 19 verse 21. This was not a suggestion only to be obeyed by those who felt led of the Lord to sell their possessions. Rather, this was a commandment for all believers to follow. We see them obeying Jesus' command in 2.45 and 4, 34-35. This was done because, if Israel believed the gospel, the seven-year tribulation period would have started, and their possessions would have been taken away from them by the Antichrist in the middle of the tribulation period because they would not take the mark of the beast, Revelation 13 verses 16 to 17. They also needed to concentrate their full efforts on reaching all of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matthew 10 verses 5 to 6, because they would not even finish going over all the cities of Israel before Jesus' second coming, Matthew 10 verse 23. Therefore, they might as well quit their jobs and use their possessions now for the furtherance of the gospel, rather than having them taken away by the Antichrist. However, because Israel did not believe the gospel, the kingdom program has been set aside. The end of the world will not come in seven years, 
and God's promise to give them the food they need to live on is no more in the dispensation of grace, Matthew 7 verses 7 to 11. This means that the Jerusalem saints are poor and in need, Romans 15 verse 26. Therefore, the Christians in Antioch sent a gift to the Jerusalem saints to help them. This is another sign that the kingdom program has been set aside. If it had not, they would have asked for God to give them what they need, and he would have provided. Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Matthew 6 verses 31 to 32. Instead, they have to rely upon help from the Christians of the Grace Dispensation, 